So by the year 1798, Napoleon, uh, who was only 28 at the time, suddenly uh, seemed to be at the height of power in the revolution. After all, the revolution had had a series of ineffectual leaders. Most of the leaders had ultimately gone to the guillotine. And so the various leaders of the revolution at this time, there were particularly five who ruled a directorate, uh, they began to fear that Napoleon may make a move on their power. And so they decided that they needed to give him an occupation. Uh, they needed to give him something that would get him out of Paris, uh, get him out of France, and possibly let's get him out of Europe altogether. And so they convinced them, actually they ordered him, to go and conquer Egypt. Uh, why Egypt? Well, uh, they wanted to have a great sugar colony. And Egypt, with its mighty and fertile Nile Valley, uh, seemed like the ideal place for this. It had been an ideal uh, farming center for thousands of years already. Also, of course, it would extend the French Empire of the Revolution, or whatever you want to call it at this point. This is primarily about money and sugar. But all the same, it would also get Napoleon out of France and Europe altogether. Uh, so they sent him down with an army of roughly 30,000. Uh, when Napoleon uh, arrived in Egypt uh, with a fairly sizable French fleet, uh, he managed to gather another 30,000 mercenaries from Egypt and other nearby lands. And he also managed to get some 50,000 camels that he would use to transport his soldiers across the deserts of Egypt and the Middle East. He also brought with him 150 cannons to accomplish his aims. It's also at this time that Napoleon began to realize, you know what, we really need a quicker way to get from the Mediterranean over to India and China instead of going around Africa. And so he actually ordered some of his men to begin digging a canal that would connect the Red Sea with the Mediterranean. This ultimately would become the famous Suez Canal that would be completed almost a century later. But still, that idea was begun in earnest by Napoleon, who was always a great visionary. He ultimately made a plan uh, that he would not only conquer Egypt, uh, but he would also conquer all of the Middle East, uh, the entire Ottoman Empire. And then from there, he would go and he would conquer India. He actually made the plan to do all of this in just four months, uh, planning to uh, pick up various tribal allies along the way and really follow in the footsteps of one of his greatest heroes of all time, Alexander uh, the Great. He also had an incredible vision for the, for the sciences and for the various humanities. In fact, it was on this expedition that Napoleon brought some 167 scholars who came from fields such as chemistry, mathematics, naturalists, there were linguists, there were historians. All of these were actually brought down to see what they could discover in Egypt. But ultimately, it's been argued, I think successfully, that Napoleon's primary goal was one particular city, and that was the city of Jerusalem. After all, Jerusalem was the spiritual capital of the world, being the center uh, for Judaism, being a center for Islam, and of course, a center for Christianity. And so Napoleon saw that kind of as the center of his great masterpiece of conquering what had been Alexander's kingdom. If he could secure Jerusalem, he thought he could somehow control everything else. It would be like a new crusade, only it'd be for very different reasons than the original crusade. 